Type Afghanistan into Google and see what you find. Bombings. An explosion ripped through a wedding in Kabul, Afghanistan, killing dozens of people. In War. Crisis. <laughs> these are normally the pictures that come to mind when you hear the name Afghanistan. But are these tragic events really that common? Yes, tragedy strikes Afghanistan on a daily basis, a country at war for 40 years. But is there another side to Afghanistan that is rarely covered? Let's find out. The world's deadliest conflict. The war should end in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We will smile towards life because life is worth smiling. Not a day without violence. We will show that resilience. We will not allow people to know that we have weakened. Our families shed blood for this country. So this morning we've come to a local family's house and we're going to go in and see how the locals live. It should be a few kids and a mother and uh, maybe a father, I'm not sure. And we'll see kind of the general environment of a, a standard house here in uh, Mazar in Afghanistan. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Mohammed Tahir. Uh, he's 70 years old. Uh, he's been living all his life in Chogdak. He's a, uh, it's a part of mazar -e sharif uh, the capital city of Balkh province. Uh, he's grown up here. He's a farmer by profession. Can I ask what kind of farming he was doing? Uh, we basically uh, cultivate or we farm anything like from wheat to uh, cotton to tomato. Uh, anything that's the season and is in demand, so we would do that. Did he ever farm uh, opium poppies? Poppy, it's uh, forbidden in our religion. Right. Uh, we will not do it any. Um, even if some people want to do it, the police will not allow it. They would eradicate it. So poppy is out of the question for me. Okay, and so. 90% of the world's uh, heroin comes from Afghan opium, so uh, can you ask him if he knows there's a, about the huge scene here and has he ever seen it in action? Uh, I've been to Chimtal, one of the districts here, uh, and I've seen it with my eyes that it's being grown there, poppies are grown there. Uh, there are a lot of people who are making immense money out of it and I've seen it, uh, I've even seen it when they put uh, into work and extract the whole thing from the poppies. Uh, so yeah, I've seen that, but it's not a good thing. Have you finished farming now? Right now, no, I'm still a farmer, active farmer. I'm still working, I'm now picking up uh, cotton birds uh, from the feed right now. Like I will even go today to pick them up, so I'm still working. Is it a hard life here? It's been more than four years that this uh, place, this room, they collapsed due to mm -hmm. rain. And since then I've not been able to build them four years and we are just staying in a two rooms and very difficult for us um, but still uh, this is how difficult life is economically um, the other hardships in life uh, life is difficult yes and so can you just explain this uh, little setup here this is obviously where you get your boiling water and do you have to come out here all year round in the winter when it's extremely cold and yeah we use this yes all year round for boiling water uh, it makes it much easier and cheaper. And so what's the temperature here in the, in the coldest of winter? It, it even drops to 30, 35. Uh, in, 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 in Celsius? Yeah, yeah. You mean minus 30? Yeah, minus 30. Minus 30, okay. And there's no heating in this house? So what they do is that they put up a table uh, and put a big blanket over it and they buy coal. So they uh, take one kg of coal, burn it and put it under that and all of them sleep under it until morning so that they can save money during 
winter. Does he consider himself uh, happy and content? I'm alive, yeah. and that's the reason to be happy. And we can join your as the mother, the Dalati Pochayis. That's a Wow. Okay, so we've just come and met the daughter-in-law of uh, the man that we just met. So she's uh, basically taking uh, uh, children for vaccination okay. um, and have not missed their vaccination. So okay. one of the mothers who basically have not missed the vaccination of her children at all. Because measles is quite a, a big thing here in Afghanistan, right? It's out of hand. Uh, measles is a, a difficulty still in Afghanistan. It's a still a virus that needs to be uh, tackled with. Like, uh, it's very important to have that continuation of vaccination for measles uh, prevention in Afghanistan. The vaccination is free, is that correct? I don't want to talk to you about the vaccine. No, I don't want to talk to you about it. This is the fifth time I'm taking my children for vaccination. I've never paid for it. Okay. So we're just going to follow this mother to the clinic and see the baby being vaccinated. After that we're going to go to another house and see inside the house because sadly there's guests here so we can't go inside and, and film. Um, but that, that should be quite interesting. And then tonight we're going to a, a wedding uh, where all the men are be, going to be partying and going crazy. So it should be a great atmosphere. So, But um, firstly we'll head to the clinic. So we've come to the clinic, the baby's got an injection. It was just a short walk from her house, luckily. The immunization's free, which is great. It's another UNICEF-covered project. I think an immunization is a few cents per um, injection, so um, it prevents a lot of disease. Um, when we were in Kabul, we saw a girl who was extremely sick and, and she hadn't been immunized and it was quite hard to see she was getting put in the back of an ambulance and things so I'll put some information in a link below if you want to read more and there'll be an option to uh, chip in a bit of money if you want to. Now we're going to head to uh, another house and hopefully actually go into this house and actually see you know the kitchen the living room and, and the general living conditions of a, an Afghan person in uh, Mazari Sharaf, the third biggest city of Afghanistan here. arrived at the next house, uh, but this has apparently got a reasonably high crime rate, um, this neighbourhood. So we've had to come accompanied with uh, the Afghan National Security Forces, you can see them behind me here. So we're going to ask them a few questions about their job and things. So, Assalamualaikum. So Arian, can you just ask him uh, what he's doing here? My name is Khanas, I'm uh, my name is Isa Khan. I'm from Dawlat Abad in Balkh province. It's been 12 years I'm escorting UNICEF uh, workers who go out of the uh, secure areas. We uh, accompany them so that they can uh, take the services that are essential for children. I myself have children so I realize the important work that they're doing and I'm always alert 
uh, providing the best security that I can for them because they have to do the work that they're doing. It's for the other children and my children as well. I'm here for the 12 years and I've not had a single moment of hesitation for what I'm doing because I know that if I provide the good security that is required, we would be able to do our work. Everybody would be able to do their work and more children would, children would benefit. And that is why I'm very motivated and I want to work here. Over the 12 years of working here, um, has he seen the situation, would you say, improve or deteriorate? I think that uh, the situation has been almost the same, but over the one year, Things, has, uh, things have uh, deteriorated a bit. In the last one year, uh, things have deteriorated a bit, but uh, it's been always the same. There's been insecurity, constant insecurity. But like I said, that uh, security and security, uh, we will do what is necessary for children and provide that security that is required of me. Is he content and happy living in Afghanistan? Well, uh, maybe life is hard. But what I'm doing is serving and serving in uniform and that's a pride and that's a happiness for me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now we're just going to head inside this local house here and see how these uh, people, this family, lives. So the, this room here is for the guests. Uh, th this is the usual thing that the guests don't come inside the house. They stay here, out of the house, and uh, they can stay here the night and they can uh, have tea and whatever they want with the family. So we're thinking to have another room built upstairs because our family is big. Uh, we don't have enough room, so we're thinking of building another room, that's why we have played this stairs. So this here is the sort of a storeroom, we store our things here. This is also our bigger storeroom where we put our winter clothes, our summer clothes, anything that we would use later, we store it here, we put it here. So we sit here and we eat here. This is the eating place. Mm -hmm. And this on the right is my children's room. Um, they sleep here, they study here. And this room is theirs. This is our kitchen. Yeah. We're just heading out now and uh, we have to keep these visits quite quick. Our security advisor has told us that there's Taliban within a one kilometer radius around here. So we've got to, you know, you can't stay too long in one place. So I hope that gives you a good glance into um, how the locals live here. Is that quite a standard uh, house, Aryan? That's quite a standard house. Normally two rooms with one guest house. Uh, and you can see and there are not too many furniture. And is that like middle income kind of family or low? Or? This is a low income family who are living in a rented uh, house and the rent here would be not more than $5 or $10 uh, a month. Alright, so we've just arrived at a underground bazaar. So it kind of looks like the entrance of a subway station. Salam. And so we're going to go down and uh, see the bazaar in here. So this is more of the kind of middle class shopping area as you can see. It's not the most interesting thing, it's just a shopping mall, but, but I think it's quite cool to show that here in Afghanistan there is still, you know, shops like this. There's a H&M up here, but I'm not convinced how, if it's real or not. Salaam alaikum. Salaam alaikum. So we're actually heading to that Afghan wedding that I mentioned tonight, um, but we're just going to drive around the Blue Mosque here. We're going to go there to morning, in the morning and have a look inside, but just on the way uh, back to the wedding, we're going to drive past so you'll see how beautiful this big Persian uh, mosque is.
So this is the main entrance where guests are coming in and then they divide into male and female section. Is this the owner here that we're with? What? Is this the owner? Or the manager? He's the, he's the manager. Uh -huh, okay. yeah. Wow. It's beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful. Big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They can accommodate two, two and a half thousand people at one time. And it's a, it's a flourishing business though, you get lots of weddings. Well, it's good, yeah, it happens like uh, uh, now there is uh, a bit economic problem and people are not, uh, are not financially that strong as before. So there are not that many weddings, but uh, yeah, it happens and business is fine. So we are, we are the aliens right now. For oh, everyone. yeah, for yeah. sure. Mm. It's, a, it's a masquerade right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum Wow. <laughs> so this is how the bride and groom comes, their vehicle comes right from here. And they go down there on the stage where they, they will be received by the people. Drive down onto the yeah, stage. Yeah, onto the stage. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think you get the idea. It's, this is one of the most elaborate things I've ever seen. It's, it's, it's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Preparing for fruits, salads here. I've never seen anything so extreme in my life. I haven't seen myself, seriously. Really? It's my first time I'm seeing this. In my wedding, it was about like 100 people at like most. The loved one, the yeah. close one, but this is crazy. This is, and wow. so this whole thing is 10,000 US dollars. This is, I guess, more than ten thousand. Could be twenty-five thousand okay. dollars now. A wedding of this capacity in um, in the West would run into the hundreds of thousands. Exactly, it yeah. would. You saw before all the locals dancing, and above them, the groom was on the chair, and then they started throwing money at them, real money, throwing it up at the groom. There's one thousand people invited tonight, uh, and then one thousand women are invited right. tomorrow. Okay. So that will be another. So, so the, the, it's all men here and tomorrow will be all women? All women. And so when's the actual, do, do the bride and groom come together? They do, they do. It's different in each uh, province. Uh, and in Kabul, you have uh, even joint weddings where bride and groom family are together. along here like this full. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> so another huge day here in Afghanistan. Started the day by meeting the local families Having a look around the house, quite interesting to see how people live and how much they pay for rent, $10 for that house. Interviewing the security forces there, seeing how the whole measles process works, that was interesting. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna leave some information below if you wanna check it out or if you wanna donate a bit of money. And then that wedding was 
the, one of the most extreme things I've ever seen. A guy hanging above his friends dancing while they throw money at him. Fascinating. And then they came and served us so much food, it was no words to explain. I hope by showing that wedding that you see that it's not all negative here in Afghanistan. There are positives. There are positives. It's, it's not all, all doom and gloom. The locals are very friendly, very important to, to focus on these parts. Also, obviously important to acknowledge the, the conflict and, and the disease and the malnutrition and things like that, but also very important to hold on to hope. And I hope you can see the positive sides of Afghanistan through these videos. Tomorrow is going to be extreme getting up super early, super, super early, going for more adventures here in Afghanistan, kind of explore more. So join me. If you want to see the photos from this trip, uh, feel free to have a look at my Instagram. Here are some of the photos I've been getting. I'll leave the link down below. And um, if you want to follow along in a picture version, you can also do that. In case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. <laughs>